Hi everyone, it's me, Seth, an educator at Silverwood, and it's time for another Eco Art for Kids. We can go to Silverwood virtually, explore the art and nature on the trails, learning about what we see. Then we can bring it on home and learn how to make an art project. Come on, let's go to Silverwood. Here we are at the trails at Silverwood, and do you know what I've spotted? Flowers, like this garlic mustard. There are so many different kinds. Like, look at all these. There's some wild geranium, some honeysuckle, pussy toes. This is ground ivy, or some people call it creeping charlie. Jack in the pulpit. This is dirt. The flowers are really cool on the trail, but today I'm wondering what is it that they're growing in? That dark brown black stuff. Dirt, right? Soil? What is it really? What's it made out of? I know that my friend Bailey will be able to help us out. Bailey? Thank you, Seth. This is interpretive naturalist Bailey Call, and I am going to tell you a little bit more about soil. Let's get discovering by starting with what soil is. Come on, let's go. So here I have two different types of samples of soil that I have collected. Um, and soil is defined as containing microorganisms or decaying matter earthworms, and you might find insects in there every once in a while too. Um, soil is super important and contains billions of microorganisms. Um, so this soil here, you can see is really darkly colored. It has lots of sticks in it. Things are breaking down inside this soil. Whereas this one is more rocky. It's got more sand in it. You can actually see this is a lighter color when compared to this soil. So this soil um, sometimes is referred to as dirt. Well, dirt is actually dead soil. That means those nutrients, all that good stuff inside the soil is mostly gone. Um, but thankfully we can add something called compost back into the dirt to help it turn back into soil. So I wanted to show you something here. This is my compost bin. And you can see it's kind of yucky inside. There's banana peels and some eggshells in there. Um, but this compost will actually get turned into soil. So it will start decaying. It'll start turning back into that compost and we can actually add it back into this dirt to make it nice and nutrient rich again. If you don't have a city that does composting, um, don't worry, you can also start a compost inside of your home or outside in your yard. Um, that's something you can do to help bring some nutrients back into the soil around the places you live. So why is this important? Why is soil so important for life on Earth? Well, let's find out more about it. I want to show you a cool experiment that I started that you could try at home. Let's do it. Soil is so important for places to, for plants to grow. It acts as a growing medium. Lots of plants need different types of soil to grow best. And sometimes you'll see that in the forests of different shrubs or trees being able to grow when the soil types are the right conditions for that plant. So to see what kind of soil you might be looking at, you might try this experiment. So I took a glass jar and filled it about halfway full of some soil that I found. Um, and then I have some water in this jar and all I'm going to do is add the water to the soil. Does anybody know what this step is? Right about there is what we call mud, which is so fun to play in. But we added our water. So now we've got our water and our soil in our jar. And what I'm gonna do is simply make sure that lid is on there nice and tight. And I'm gonna shake it. 
I'm gonna shake, 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 shake that jar. Woo! My arm is getting tired, but I'm gonna keep on shaking it, shaking it, shaking it till it's all stirred up. And then what I can do is I can just wait. And what will happen is the layers of this soil will start to separate. So I did this a little while ago so that you could see what that exactly looks like. And what you can see in this jar is actually the different types of soil that exist. So let's zoom in and take a closer look at what that looks like. All right, so when we look closely at our sample, you can start to see different layers to our soil. So I see one really tiny layer right about there. There's another layer that starts and goes to about there. And then there's another layer that starts and goes to about there. So these are kind of broken up into three main soil types. Um, the top to soil type is called clay. The bottom so or the middle soil type is called silt. And the bottom toil soil type is called sand. Now different samples of these different materials have a different amount of each one of these layers. So if this is 100% of our soil, this whole thing is 100%, I would say that sand, this bottom layer, makes up probably about 50 or half of this area. I would say that this silt area probably takes about, oh, maybe 48% of this area, and the clay is only two. So then I can actually write on my board here that my sample had 2% clay, 48% percent silt and 50 percent sand. Now this is just one soil sample and a lot of different soil have different amounts of these percentages and that puts them in a different category of type of soil. So let's take a look at those different types. Let's take a look at those different kind of combinations of soil types. All right, so here we have this texture triangle and soil scientists called pedologists um, take this soil sample and just like we did, dissolve those particles within water and let them settle into the layers based on their size. So again, sand fell in the bottom, which is the largest, silt was the next smallest, and clay is the very smallest, which is how we got our layers. So in order to use this, we are gonna start with clay and you can see the arrow for clay goes across. So we had clay at about zero. So we're gonna go across this way, all right? We had silt here at about, well, let's round up to about 50. And this one goes down like this. And finally, we had sand. And sand was also about 50, and that went up like that. So the place in where these lines intersect is the type of soil we had. So right about here is the place we had. So if you look, this section right here called sandy loam is likely the type of soil that we were able to extract. So based on that, we can find out a lot more information about what kind of things grow in this soil, what the soil is good for, and maybe even the history of where the soil came from. So these charts and that experiment actually allow us to tell how the soil under our feet was used in the past or how it 
kind of accumulated and got there. So it's a really, really cool experiment that can tell us a lot more about the types of soil and the types of growing conditions and types of organisms that can live in that soil. So a pretty neat experiment. And you can try this at home with some simple materials. Um, so this is kind of a neat experiment that you could give a shot at at home. Soil can tell us so many things, but one of my favorite things is just to go out and touch it. What does it feel like? Is it dry? Is it wet? Is it sandy? Hard? Gritty? Does it shine in the sunlight? Check out the soils near you and explore what type of soil you think you might have. Thank you so much for joining me today and back to you, Seth. Thanks, Bailey. That was super cool to learn all about soil and the things inside of it. My favorite part of soil are the things that grow out of the soil. Plants. I love plants and I have a nice garden that I plant in. I'll show it to you. Here, have a look. Today, I'm going to show you how I plant a basil plant. I plant basil around my tomatoes because the two plants can help each other out as they grow. Let's go, I'll show you how I go. This is where I want the plant. So first up, I'm just gonna clear a little space from my mulch. Then, I'm gonna take my garden trowel and I'm gonna dig a hole. Ooh, look, I got some worms. I like worms in the garden because they loosen up the soil. Lots of space for plants to grow in them. I try to make sure that when the roots are really well grown like this, that I can do my best to help loosen them up so that they'll grow out. And finally, we're gonna give this just a little bit of water. put some mulch back around it. Keeping it away from the basil plant as much as possible. There we have it. My basil plant is planted. Cool. Now that we've planted a plant in our garden and we've learned about the different parts of soil, we can combine different parts and art materials in order to make a piece of artwork. And my friend Allison is gonna show us how. Allison? Thank you, Seth. Hello, everyone. I'm Allison. I'm an arts educator at Silverwood Park, and I'm here today to show you how to make a fruits and veggie collage. So here's an example. A collage is a type of artwork that involves pasting pieces of paper to another piece of paper to create an image. So in this case, I used different colored pieces of paper which I cut out to create an image of strawberries and sugar snap peas. I'm really looking forward to showing you how I did this so you can make your own. For this activity, we're gonna need a few simple supplies. We're gonna start with paper, paint, I'm going to be using watercolors, glue, scissors, and paintbrushes. Let me show you the supplies that I've pulled together. 
I have two different types of paper. This is kind of regular computer paper that you're probably familiar with. This is a little bit heavier. It's called watercolor paper. If you have access to this, that's really great, but you just certainly don't need it. Computer paper would work just fine. I'm going to be using these watercolors. If you don't have watercolors, you could use a different type of paint or you could even use a different tool for mark making that's colorful. So you could use crayons or pastels and we'll talk a little bit more about what that might be like. You're going to need some glue. So I had this tacky glue available to me. It was already at my house. This is what I'm going to use. If you have a glue stick or something else, you could certainly use that. And to make it a little bit easier for myself, I put some of this glue on a paper plate so I'll be able to use it. You're going to need a pair of scissors and then a few different types of paint brushes. So I have two paint brushes here that are kind of small. One of these I'll probably use to apply my glue. And then I have a larger brush and this is actually kind of a special brush that's designed for um, painting with ink but it's gonna work really well for what I'm doing today, so I thought I'd give it a try. Just find a variety of brushes in whatever size you're, is available to you, and they'll work great for this project. The first thing that we're going to do to get started is to create some swatches of color that we can then cut up to make the elements of our collage. So I'm gonna show you how to do this step first. I want to start making my collage by making some colorful swatches of paper. Then I'm going to be cutting these up to make the shapes of my collage. So I'm going to start with this large brush. You can use whatever brush is available to you. I know I want to make strawberries, so I'm going to start with some nice red. So I'm dipping my brush into this red paint with my water, getting lots of nice material on my brush, and now I'm going to paint a square on my paper. And since I'm using watercolors, I have this water with me. If you don't have access to watercolors, you might be using crayons or pastels to create a nice colorful square on your paper. And then later we'll be cutting it up. So we could certainly stop here, but it might be kind of fun to add some texture. So I think I'm going to try using this smaller brush, getting it wet, and maybe introducing another color. Maybe a little bit of orange might be pretty. And I'm just dabbing this in. I want to make a colorful square with some texture that looks pretty. And I'm sort of thinking about what the skin of a strawberry looks like, and that's kind of helping me make my decisions. But I also just want to create some pretty texture and add in some other colors. I know that along with my red strawberries, I'm also going to have some green leaves. So I think I'm going to use the other half of my paper to make some green leaves. I actually don't have any green watercolors in my palette, but I do have yellow and I do have blue. And I know that when blue and yellow come together, they make green. Let's see. Now I have two swatches of color. You can see they're a little drippy right now. That's the nature of watercolors. So I'm just going to put this aside to dry. I'm going to take a new piece of paper and make a few more color swatches. So I know that my strawberry plants in my backyard, right now they have little flowers on them. So those flowers are kind of white, whitish yellow. So I'm going to make a pale yellow swatch. I think I might want a lighter green also. So I'm going to try to mix that by mixing some yellow, laying that yellow down first, and then mixing in a little bit of blue to get a light green. And maybe I'll decide to use this for the leaves.
or maybe I'll use it for the, my pea pods. I'm going to create some texture on these the way I did with the red. I'm going to let both of these dry and then I'll be back to show you how we can make a collage out of them. Well, it's been about 20 minutes or so, and all of my color swatches have had some time to dry. I actually put them outside to dry in the sun, and now we're ready to move on to the next step. If we take a moment to look at the collage that I made, you can see it's made out of different shapes. And to help me think through what shapes I wanted to make for my collage, I did a little bit of drawing and sketching first. So this is the shape that I'm going to cut out, um, probably using the red paper to make my strawberry. And I'll probably use some green to cut this shape out on top. I thought about the strawberry flowers that I was going to make, what shape they might be, and as well as the strawberry leaves. And then, of course, I thought about my sugar snap peas and the sugar snap pea tendrils. So it might be helpful for you to do a little bit of sketching on another piece of paper um, to help you before you start cutting things up. After taking a few minutes to think about the shapes that I want to use for my collage, I sketched out those shapes on my color swatches. So these are the areas that I'm going to cut. I decided to sketch these things out in marker so that you could see it on camera, but I would suggest drawing your shapes in pencil. That way they'll be really subtle and you can erase them and they don't need to be a part of your final collage. So I'm going to take a few minutes and cut all of these out. Then I'm going to have lots of components I can play with to make my collage or composition. Here are all the shapes that I cut out. So now that I have everything cut out, I get to make a composition, put it all together for my collage. Now that I have all my shapes cut out, I'm going to glue them to a piece of paper to make my composition. Before I start gluing things, I'm going to spend a little bit of time to think about how I want to lay things out. I think I'd like to start with a cluster of strawberries towards the bottom. It might be nice to think about where the leaves are going to go because I need to think, do I want the strawberry on top of the leaf or do I want the leaf on top of the strawberry? That's going to change the order in which I glue things. So it's worth giving it a little bit of thought. Once I have the beginning of a composition that I'm happy with, I can start to glue things. I'm going to use this piece of paper that I have my pieces on as a clean surface so that I can glue without getting glue onto this nice paper because I want to keep that clean. So I've put my glue on a paper plate and I'm going to use a small brush to apply the glue. Since this leaf is down on the bottom, I'm going to glue this piece before I glue the strawberry that goes on top. I'm going to flip it upside down on this little piece of scrap paper and then I'm using a brush to carefully apply some glue. If you have a glue stick, that will work really well. Since I don't have a glue stick, I'm using this wet glue and a brush. A little bit of glue goes a long way. Now I'm going to carefully place this on my paper and press it down. Since this strawberry is going on top, I think I'll glue this one next. My plans might change a little bit as I'm working, but it's really helpful to have an initial layout in mind, at least for each section. Here you can see my strawberries coming together with strawberry caps and leaves. 
I think it'd be nice to add some strawberry flowers. It's really coming together nicely. I'm going to use the top part of this paper to um, illustrate my sugar snap piece. I just finished gluing all of my pieces so my collage is done. I'm looking forward to having strawberries and sugar snap peas in the garden this summer. What are your favorite garden fruits and veggies? Could you use some simple materials to make a collage out of them like mine? We'd love to see the results. Thanks for joining me this week at Eco Art for Kids and back to you, Seth. Thanks, Allison. That's super cool. I hope that you have a chance to go out Look at the flowers. Think and try the experiment that Bailey showed us, showing the different parts of soil. Maybe you can go out and plant a garden. And then take it on home and make the collage that Allison showed us how to create. Until next time, we'll see you again on another Eco Art for Kids. Bye!